Hello everyone, may the 4th be with you. Today I'm going to be sharing my ROS2 based BB-8 build. First I'd like to give a shout out to the BB-8 Builders Club. This is an online forum for people who are interested in building BB-8s and a great place to start. I'd also like to give a shout out to Carrie Engineering who builds many of the components I'm using in my build. In my build I am using a Carrie Engineering Inner Sphere, which is an injection molded solution a carry engineering axle drive system, a 3D printed sphere, as well as a custom electronic setup that's based on the club design. And of course, I'm using ROS2. One of the first decisions you're going to need to make is what kind of drive system are you going to use? Hamster ball or an axle drive? With a hamster ball, you have a smooth inner sphere that the drive pod drives inside of. It has wheels which engage with the smooth inside of the ball and allow it to move forward and backward and actually turn inside of that ball. The other is an axle drive. The axle drive has the advantage that you're able to connect the inside ball to the outside ball, allowing pass-through ports such as power on or power off or a charge port. You can also have lights on the outside as, uh, as part of that build. And that's the one I chose to build. The carry sphere is made up of injection molded plastic that when fit together create the sphere. There are places to mount ports for charging and, and on off as well as lights as well as a place to mount your axle. The drive system I'm using is also from carry engineering. They provide the STL files for you to print, and I do recommend a big printer for this, but they also provide laser cut metal components that reinforce various parts of this. Now I've customized some of these and I'll make them available. My build consists of three separate computers, a controller, the head unit, and drive unit. The control unit is responsible for actually driving the robot around, the head unit contains some sensors that are needed on the outside of the ball. And then the main unit actually contains the main drive system, the head drive system, and the main compute unit. For the controller electronics, I'm actually using two different solutions. The first, I'm using a Microsoft Surface Go tablet computer. And I'm also using a Pine phone with RoboStack. Yes, you can actually run ROS on a pipe phone. For the head electronics, I need to actually have a light solution, but I also do want to have some sensors on the outside. This includes a microphone array that allows me to issue voice commands, a time of flight sensor that gives me some information about the environment, a camera that allows me to record what's going on, as well as a battery, and this all runs on top of a Pi Zero Two. Now for the main drive system, the BB-8 Builders Club provides a wiring diagram that includes numerous Arduino components. Now this is fine if the BB-8 is remote controlled, but I actually want it to be intelligent and use ROS2 internally. So my goal is to actually replace some of these components. In fact, quite a few of these components. My electronics, I'm using a Jetson Nano, a PWM controller that uses Quick a ADC that allows me to determine where the head, head is, an IMU that gives me some information about the orientation of the body, uh, this is a classic cart pull problem, as well as a robocall to drive two of the big motors. Here's what the new component layout looks like. Quite a few components actually drop out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and move over and give you a tour of the robot. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the BB-8 itself. At the very bottom, we have a counterbalance. The way this works is when the main drive axle is rotating, it's actually causing the bottom counterbalance to move forward and the ball falls around it. This can also rotate, which allows me to give some inertia to it to spin in place. The main drive axle has slip rings on it which allow me to pass data to the outside ball. I have a quick connector and some power, so I can power some LEDs uh, and on the outside. And on this side, I have a charge port 
and an on off switch. When the ball is rolling in order for it to turn, the unit actually has to turn left and right. So this servo in the back is responsible for tilting the robot. And you can see that that causes the robot to tilt. And as the robot sp spins, the ball will actually roll around that axis. Now the head unit has multiple axes as well. So the first is left and right. It can also rotate in place and tilt forward. So if you've seen the movies, as it's rolling forward, the head tends to tilt forward. As far as electronics go, we have the Jetson Nano, a ADC that allows me to determine where the robot head is. I have a motor controller and an emergency cutoff switch. And this allows me to turn it off should the something fail and the robot is spinning off into space. You'll see some of the uh, laser cut components here. So some brackets that actually hold the servos in, as well as a tooth system at the bottom that engages with the motor to spin the counterbalance. Most important, don't forget to fuse your components. So now let's talk about software. I'm of course using the robot operating system. If you're coming here because you haven't seen my other videos, the robot operating system is a system for operating robots. It's not an operating system like Windows or Linux, but it sits between your application and the traditional operating system. It's a middleware for building these robotic solutions, which is distributed, composable, intelligent, and industrialized. Composable means that I can build it from build a robotic solution from numerous different components that are available from other vendors. This particular robot's actually built from numerous components from my other videos. It's distributed by its very nature, which means that it's composed of multiple different compute units. I can have a computer in the head and the body, and they don't even know they're separate from each other, as long as they can talk to each other on the same network. The remote control also is a separate computer that is talking as if it's right there with the rest of the components. Very cool. There are components for intelligence, which means I can bring machine learning onto the solution with very minimal overhead. And it's also industrialized. ROS2, the next generation of ROS, is built specifically for commercial and industrial applications. So now let's talk about the controller software. I have two separate ROS nodes running on the controller. One is the joystick ROS node, which is consuming directly from the joystick and publishing on the joystick topic. The other is the visualizer RViz, which is consuming from camera raw, which is coming from the head unit. In the head unit, I have two ROS nodes right now. One is the camera, which is publishing on camera image raw, which is what the visualizer is going to use, and a time of flight sensor, which is an 8 by 8 point cloud that's publishing on points too. Now these are actually be consumed by ROS running in the ball itself, communicating from the head to the body over Wi-Fi. Now in the body we have several things going on. First we have two devices that act as output, the RoboClaw and the Quick Servo. The RoboClaw is actually two parts of a three-part drive system, with one of those parts being a servo. So I actually have to be able to turn one type of command into two different types of commands, and we'll see that in a second. We also have a teleop twist joy, which is responsible for taking joystick messages and actually turning them into what's called a command velocity, which is a linear acceleration and an angular acceleration that's needed for driving. I also have a very specific ball drive system, which is understands what's going on from the joystick and publishes to the head. So first, the joystick, which is being published from the controller, is being consumed by the teleop twist. It is generating a command velocity that I've called command velocity head because I want to separate it from other types of commands that we're going to be getting. The ball drive is going to be listening to that and generating a drive command for driving the robot. 
but it also needs to be able to publish on servos in order to be able to turn parts of the, the control system. For the head, we also have something interesting going on. We have that same quick servo, because there are multiple servos servicing the head, but we have a separate head control unit, which is responsible for understanding what the robot sees as well as what the, the controller is generating. I'm using the Microsoft Onyx Runtime ROS node, which has a person detector, and there's a reason for that. What I want the head to be able to do is to turn around and observe people independently unless I take control over it with a joystick, so that the joystick actually overrides the AI part of the head. So the way this works is an Onyx model is a type of machine learning model, and which is hardware accelerated by the Microsoft Onyx Runtime ROS node. We have camera data and point data coming off of the head unit, crossing the ball into the body. That the Onyx Runtime ROS node is subscribing to the camera output, and the head unit is actually subscribing to the point cloud. Now from that point cloud, what we're going to do is look to see if we can find an individual person and point the head at the closest person. So we're using the point cloud data, not just for navigation, but also to infer a human robot interaction. The, run, the Onyx runtime publishes a tracked object and says, here's all the people I see. The head control unit says, OK, I'm going to pick out the closest person and try and drive the head to point to that person. Unless, of course, I have data coming from the joystick that says, no, 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 I want you to point in a specific direction. With all of that information, we will publish on a servo, actually multiple servos, in order to rotate the head or tilt left and right, forward and backward. Anyway, I wanted to give you an overview of my BB-8. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you very much for your time. Oh, and don't forget to recycle your droids.